Today we're going to talk about the second head of biceps femoris, which is a muscle that goes from here to here. We're going to go much more close up on it in a second and learn how to identify it, palpate it, and actually release it. Uh, and I'm picking that and a bunch of different muscles uh, over this series that we're about to film because they're muscles that you either didn't learn about in school or forgot about. And I think that they're really useful ones to know about. So that's what we're covering today. Let's get to it. Biceps femoris, like the Latin term biceps, means muscle with two heads. Triceps is three heads, quadriceps is four heads, biceps is two. So the long head attaches where all the hamstrings attach up at the ischial tuberosity and comes down and attaches at the bottom end and in some ways of talking about it, inserts into the head of the fibula. And so the long head goes from roughly here to here and is, acts like the rest of the normal hamstrings that come in on the medial side. However, there is this second head that starts in the middle of the femur on the linea aspera and attaches all the way in the middle here and comes down and again attaches at the same place that the long head attaches at the head of the fibula. And if you can think about that being a muscle that contracts, you can see how that shortening would take the lower leg into external rotation, right? And so if that's really, really tight, you're gonna see people where when they're lying on the table, their knee is pointed straight down, but their foot is angled off to the side. And let's just bring the camera around so you can see what that looks like, right? And so her knee is pointing straight down at the table, but her foot is off to the side. And that would indicate a tightness of the second head, among other things. All right? And so any time that you see this lower leg external rotation, there's a whole bunch of other factors involved. But if you can make a release of the second head of biceps femoris, you're going to go a long way towards being able to bring that lower leg into more proper rotation as compared to the upper leg. So let's get into how and where you would palpate that. What I'm gonna have Brianna, who is a fabulous massage therapist in her own right, do is I'm gonna have her hold her leg up here and you can see this tendon here pop out. Maybe not on camera, hold it up again and pull hard against my heel. So right here, there is a big large tendon. That is the tendon of the long head that goes all the way up to the ischial tuberosity. Underneath and between, so there's the long head, it attaches to the head of the fibula. Uh, lateral to that you've got the IT band which also comes down and attaches to the head of the fibula. In between that space, if you palpate underneath the tendon of the long head, so hold this up, if I put my thumb under the long head and straight down, that is gonna get right on to the second head. And so the way that you wanna contact this is come under the long head, hold this up a second, under the long head and above or between the space of the long head and the IT band. And I'm gonna guess, Brianna, that that just contact of my thumb onto the belly of this second head muscle isn't that pleasant to feel. You won't see her on video, but she is definitely shaking her head no. If I were to really press into it, it is going to externally rotate the lower leg. And so in order to release it, I can first just contact it and do a little bit of pin and stretch on it while also taking the foot and trying to internally rotate the tibia and the fibula. So that is one way that you can easily find it, contact it, and do some release work that will help undo some of the external rotation of the lower leg and let the lower leg sit more easily in place with the lower and the upper leg in general. And so that is really useful for knee pain. That's really useful for hip pain and low back pain. It's going to show up in a lot of different places like that. 